Matt, thank you for joining us for this demo. Could you introduce yourself and talk about your experience working with Kinetica? Sure. Hi, Hari. Thanks for having me along. My name's Matt Hawkins. I'm CTO of CarryRx. I've worked with Kinetica for many years, both as a end user as well as a developer, primarily involved in the geospatial space. So I'm here today to show you some of the ways that we use Kinetica and some of the advantages that it has integrating with our Esri platform. Nice. Could we talk about how Kinetica fits into the Esri ecosystem and how you envision it being used? Yeah, sure. So one of the ways that we use Esri is via the desktop application. And one thing our analysts often want to do is to be able to view a very large geospatial data set on the screen, plotted on a map, and be able to interact with that that directly inside the Esri canvas. When you're using something like a PostGIS, it, it kind of lacks, the first major feature that it lacks, let's say, that Kinetica provides is the ability to serve WMS layers directly from database tables. So what that means is that I can take my multi-billion point data sets. I don't have to then extract that data to my desktop. I don't have to constantly be pushing down queries to render data locally. I can take advantage of the Kinetica WMS service and server side on the Kinetica database, it generates the WMS image and it serves that image back to Esri. So as we'll see when we get into the demo, I can have 4 billion points plotted on a canvas and be able to, to drill into different parts of that data very quickly. Something like a PostGIS would either require me to be heavily querying that table to filter out a part of the data that I want to look at, or it would be requiring me to download huge amounts of data to my desktop to serve that same request. Also, Kinetica is generally just faster than all these other technologies, so geospatial queries. And we have some streaming data inside our, our architecture as well, and where the tables are constantly changing, we don't see any, any difference in performance. Should we jump straight into the demo? So I can just talk through this, but feel free to ask any questions as we go through. Here is Esri, as everybody who uses Esri will, will know, this is the ArcGIS desktop client. And I've got my, my map canvas. Now, the first way that we can interact with Kinetica is by creating a new connection to a WMS server. So creating a connection to a WMS server is as simple as jumping into here and putting in a link to your particular WMS, Kinetica server, sorry, and providing the correct path to the WMS server. I'll punch in some credentials and we will go away and create that connection. Now, if I come over here onto the right hand side, you can see I've already got some Kinetica servers that I've already provisioned. But once I click into some of these, I can essentially see all of the tables inside Kinetica, which I can drag onto the canvas as a WMS layer. Now nice. I can just go and grab any of these, but I've actually prepared some over here previously, just so that we can add some some style to these and show you what they, they look like. So for example, I've got some Twitter data and this table on the back end contains 4 billion rows and I've applied some arbitrary WMS parameters to this WMS request, asking for a heat map and asking for a particular color scheme. Now at this point, I can see that it's pointing the table that it's actually pointing to on the back end. And I can just turn this this layer on and I'm going to get mm. that plotted instantly here for me to be able to see on my map canvas. One great thing about Kinetica as well is it's actually serving all of the necessary parameters for me to be able to click in and view the line item data here directly through WMS. So what's happening behind the scenes when a click event happens on that canvas? It's essentially as part of the WMS payload, we're providing info on on all of the features that we're, we're plotting as part of that payload so when you click mm. into a certain area you can look at the line item data that's available under the hood all right so just to demonstrate some of the different options that we have as well i'm just going to change the color scheme on this particular layer over to what we call the inferno and that's just going to give us a, a contrasting style here on the on the mm. canvas essentially so just to give you some idea that you can build up different styles, you, you can pass lots of different options back to our WMS layers to style, curate, add things like labels, etc. if that's what you wanted to do. And it's given me full access to a 4 billion row data set here, plotted with access to the line item data, which is great. 4 billion. 4 billion. 
That's it. Yeah. That's what's in this table. What's the what usual limit on, say, ArcGIS if you were to plot? Without it's all about the size of the data, right? So this is this is a desktop. If I created a, a connection to a database and asked it to fetch records, then how many records can you download? It's like, what, a million, five million, mm. maybe 20 million? It really depends on the size of the data, but you're certainly not going to get to four billion, right? You're probably yeah. not going to get to a hundred million. You mm. might be... You might have some success around 30 million, maybe, maybe 40 million, but you really, really does depend on the size of the data and how far you Got want it. to Got it. So this is about, about 100 times bigger in scale. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm not having to move any data, right? So it's a big deal yeah. not to have to move data around inside mm -hmm. the organization. Putting it over networks, waiting for it to load, etc. That's big Because thing. this image is being generated on Kinetica and then all you're seeing is a lightweight image. Right? Correct. Absolutely. Okay. It's just a, an image generated on Kinetica server passed through. Nice. Okay. I've got a few other different layers here as well, just to kind of show some of the other things that, that we can do. So we're not restricted to just heat maps on point data, for example. So I'm going to pull up a data set here, which is building footprints across the USA. And if I zoom in, you will start to essentially see very high resolution, very precise, uh, very precisely WMS rendered selection of building data for the whole of the US. Mm. I think this table is around 200 million records in size. Complex polygons. And we are, again, making a WMS request. I think we've got some arbitrary styling on here just to say, hey, we want, this is the column where our geospatial attribute is. This is what color we want our lines to be. And we want to do shapes as part of this, this call. And I've now have this image, which I can look at this, this data and again, click into it to get line item results so i can see that this particular mm. building that i've clicked is a has a asphalt shingle roof and its exterior material is is vinyl right so just some arbitrary nice. information right and with these complex polygons these can sometimes be very heavy duty to to render especially client side and Kinetic can just burn through rendering 200 million shapes here and, and passing it straight through to the client wow. and again just to kind of complete this as well if i wanted to overlay multiple data sets that's absolutely possible as well right so i'm not restricted to just having one layer at a time mm. and i can just bring in a, 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 some flight data for example and this is showing tracks which is a piece of kinetica specific data object and here i can see all these flight tracks plotting where where planes have been combined with mm. with building data and you know what, maybe I wanted to do a piece of analysis now, which would show me the impact of plane routes over residential buildings, for example. And mm -hmm. I've got those two data sets here in a single canvas that I could I could start to do that with. Yeah. And it's rendering all of this really fast also, all of this data. Right? Absolutely. It's, it's great. Absolutely. So one of the questions that, that might come up as part of we're using this sometimes is WMS obviously has its limitations inside Esri in terms of what you, you can and can't do with it. It's not as interactive perhaps as a native esri map layer so how can we use that to actually start to select an area that we're interested in pull that data out and create something which gives us a little bit more interactivity here in the in the esri canvas so the way that we do that is we leverage the kinetica python api right mm. so within arcgis here we can have a, a jupyter notebook right very familiar to everybody and I can, with what what have we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines of code. I can connect to Kinetica. I can run a large geospatial query, a complex geospatial query of any kind, pull that data back, create an Esri specific layer, which I can then share internally, externally, use on the desktop. So hmm. we'll just we'll just run through this now, right? We've got some arbitrary packages that we're bringing in here. GPU DB, which is the Kinetica package being one of them. I'm then going to make a connection to my Kinetica server, which is as simple as URL, username and password. And then I'm essentially going to pull some data out of Kinetica into a local data frame. And this is where we, we've used the WMS layers to identify an area of interest that we want to double click on maybe. And I'm just going to use that 4 billion row Twitter data set. I'm going to run a STXY contains, which is essentially going to give me all the tweets inside this arbitrary boundary that, that I'm defining. So geospatial filter on 4 billion records and pull that data down as completed in the time that I've mm. taken that sentence, which is a fantastic level of interactivity. So yeah. 
Now I have it here, I can do a couple more lines of code to convert that data frame, that, that pandas data frame that I've created into a spatial data frame. And I'll then be able to publish that layer. And here you can see what that kind of data looks like. And now we're going to publish this out to Arc ArcGIS Online, right? So you might want to publish this to your own internal server. I I'm using ArcGIS Online. And then I'm just going to import this layer back into, into my local canvas map layers here on the, the left. And if we nice. just give this a second, what we also should see so is a link, which will take me right through into ArcGIS Online, where we'll see that this layer has been provisioned there that I can then use to build online services, online maps, etc. if I wanted to as well. Mm. So if I click into here, I'm going to have to log in. So I'm just going to pause my screen share while I do that, because I'm going to have to go into my password manager. So I log in and that will then bring me to the individual details for this layer that I've just published. I can open it here in the map viewer and we'll immediately be able to see all the data points that we, we chopped out with that geospatial query. And obviously this now is, is an interactive Esri mm. layer that we can use. And if I come back to the, the desktop here and I just turn this layer on, I've added some arbitrary aggregation to this and we can have no aggregation or we can have any with this kind of layer we've essentially got all Esri features available to us right so nice. and then i can start to maybe overlay other wms on this as well so essentially you can build up that larger view of the data which the wms layer is providing couple that with the bigger plethora of data that we've got and just start to overlay this with any layers that we've got inside Kinetica that we, we mm. want to serve. So combine those multi-billion row data sets with more precise, smaller data sets, but still leveraging the power of Kinetica to run those geospatial queries and cut the interesting parts of the data out. Yeah, this is awesome. So essentially, we're, we, so just so that I understand you correctly, we're taking large data sets, running complex geospatial operations on them and mm -hmm. shipping out smaller, more manageable data out to Esri. Right. right, WMS um, is very much a visual experience, right? For yeah, you to look yeah. at data and it's a way to enrich canvases and mm -hmm. it's a way to visually identify areas of interest. When you yeah. want to get down to doing things in Esri, like here we've got all those points that we chopped out using our Python process. If I want yeah. to apply features like clustering, for example, mm -hmm. Esri can do that very, very well, but yeah. it's not going to be able to do that on WMS data set, yeah, right? Yeah. It needs a layer provisioned inside Esri itself that it can use to do that. Kinetica nice. can absolutely run the SQL query to give you the answer to this question, but yeah. that's not giving you that interactive experience here, switching between binning, allowing you to zoom in and get to even smaller and smaller aggregations and visual representations of the data, mm. which we know Esri is very good at. Yeah, this is awesome. It's yeah. a way to essentially handle, seamlessly handle large scale data absolutely. on Esri, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Integrate exactly. large data sets produce good looking map canvases on multi-billion row sets, extract areas of interest, bring them into Esri as, as real Esri layers for want of a better expression, and then have the mm -hmm. full suite of Esri capabilities available on top of that data that you've curated and extracted from Kinetica. Yeah. And are there any limitations on the type of geospatial operations that you can perform with Kinetica? Like, are, is the entire suite of geospatial operations which are available in Kinetica available through this combo as well? Yeah, absolutely. So here in the workbook where we're, we're just running arbitrary SQL commands here. So any, could be anything. Could be anything. Yeah, there's 200 geospatial functions inside Kinetica. You can you can execute anything that you want to that the server provides. Mm. Do you have a sense for what kind of applications these would be best suited for? Like what kind of workloads are we, are we best suited to target? I think any kind of workload that has a geospatial element and a large geospatial data set. Obviously, Kinetica is very good with streaming data sets. If you want to be tracking objects in real time, that WMS layer we can configure that to refresh every second or two and give you a real-time view of a fleet of vehicles or tracking any kind of logistics operations. So I think any geospatial use case where you want to use Esri, Esri to interact with large-scale data sets, Kinetica is good for those kind of workloads. Awesome. If someone wanted to try this out, what is the best way to do that? I think you probably go to Kinetica's website and download their trial edition. WMS is just available through that as well as all the Python APIs and you can get started very quickly. Great. Well, thanks for taking time to set this up and also show off some of our capabilities and how it pairs well with Esri. This is really 
useful. No problem. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, man.